are you smarter than a limnologist? Good evening. I'm your host, Steve Foxworthy. And tonight we have Dr. Waterbody, our special limnologist guest, who will be taking on our three students in our Are You Smarter Than a Limnologist competition. Tonight, our contestants will be competing for a secret grand prize. Well, you've heard enough of me talking, let's get to these questions. Student one, Joanna, will be our first student answering questions tonight. What question will you be picking? I'll take lake stratification question two. What are the three layers of the water column in a stratified lake? From top to bottom, it's epilimnion, metalimnion, and hypolimnion. Correct. You get 10 points. Good job. The next student will be Caitlin. What question would you like to take? Water movement question one. What is the difference between a surface sage and an internal sage? If you can also tell me which one has more of an ecological effect, I will give you an extra 10 points. I know that a surface sage is the result of wind blowing constantly in one direction that results in a period of drying, but I'm not sure what an internal sage is or which one has more of an ecological effect. Could I call on the limnologist for help? All right, Dr. Waterbody, why don't you come up and explain what an internal sage is and which one has more of an ecological importance or effect? Thank you for the introduction, Steve. To start off, an internal sage is a tilting of the thermocline in a stratified lake. This leads to the rise and fall of the thermocline sideways. This makes an internal sage more ecologically important because it alters the distribution of organisms within the water column as well as alters the distribution of nutrients. Thank you, Dr. Waterbody. That was a great explanation. I'm sorry, Caitlin, but you only get five points. Next, I will call up our next student, Savannah, to pick a question. What question would you like to answer? I will take lake stratification, question three. Okay, this question is also an extra point question. If you get it right, you get 20 points total. Please tell me what a meromictic lake is and what type of layer this lake creates specific to it. A meromictic lake is a lake that never fully mixes because it is chemically stratified. I'm not 100% certain what layers this lake create. Could I call on the limnologist for help? Of course, Dr. Waterbody. A meromictic lake is a lake that never fully mixes. This is usually caused by the creation of a chemocline. A chemocline is the depth at which stratification occurs due to a density gradient created by a difference in either salinity or chemical concentration. Not only do they have a chemocline, but meromictic lakes have an upper mixolimnion containing the epilimnion and metalimnion and a monomolimnion where the chemocline occurs and this part never mixes. Thank you, Dr. Waterbody. That was a great answer. Now, we will have Joanna come back up and pick another question. I'll take water movement question two. What three factors determine wave height? Wind speed, duration, and fetch. Correct. Another 10 points goes to Joanna. Now, Caitlin will come back up and pick another question. I will take lake stratification question one. All right, your question is, explain the difference between a thermocline and a chemocline. A thermocline is the depth with the steepest temperature gradient. This is found in the metalimnion. I'm not sure how one would describe the chemocline, but I know that it takes place in a monomintic setting. Can we ask the limnologist for help? Caitlin answered the part about the thermocline correctly, and it was partially correct on the chemocline. It actually occurs in a meromictic setting but the chemocline is a deep layer in the monomolimnion that traps gas along the deep portions of the lake and can be hazardous if released by, let's say, a landslide or some other type of disruption. Excellent description, Dr. Waterbody. Caitlin, since you had to ask for help, you will only receive five points for this question, but you did do a great job. Now we will have Savannah come up for the final question that will be offered for the double the points and can be stolen if she answers incorrectly. Well, considering there's only one question left, I'll take water movement question three. What is the main difference between waves and currents? Waves move water vertically, whereas currents move water horizontally. Correct, you get 20 points. 
Now, if you look at our scoreboard, you can see that it was a very close competition, but Savannah did win by five points. The secret grand prize she's winning today is a brand new, lightly used gravelometer. Wow, thank you. All of the gravel I can meter. All right, thanks for watching tonight, guys. Come back next week to watch our students debate micro and macronutrients. I'm Steve Foxworthy, and you just watched Are You Smarter Than a Limnologist?